Hey, hi, I am here. Yes, here is Vishal, guys, uh, the founder and CEO of Goki. I don't think he needs any more introduction. <laughs> so, Vishal, over to you, and I'll see you soon to ask Q&A. Hey, hi. Hi, everybody. I think uh, uh, excited to be here talking about the future of consumer tech. And especially, I think uh, we are going to see some massive disruptions in the world of healthcare. Uh, driven by consumers themselves. I think so. That's really going to be uh, the essence of my talk today. I think uh, we are right now in unprecedented times. I think with COVID, uh, we all know uh, the kind of uh, reaction governments, organization, companies, uh, everybody is doing. But if you look at the main narrative around COVID, it all talks about immunity. It talks about constantly that how can you uh, finally fight all this by building your own immunity to do this. But during this process of immunity building, what we are seeing is some very, very uh, exciting trends. And uh, let me just quickly launch uh, a couple of my slides to kind of take you through uh, some of what we are seeing. So I hope uh, you can see my tab. One second, let me open my tab. Uh, so I think uh, talking about uh, my slide around what is really happening, I think so far we have all been experiencing what I call the internet of data. So far, the internet was a collection of all kinds of data put in, uh, and we have already seen the kind of com companies, services, whether it is Amazon, Facebook, they've all been created. But I think the future of internet is going to be defined with a very, very new kind of information, which is your health information, which is getting feeded in the millions to consumers today. Uh, and the consumers are defining their health needs in a very different way. So it's for the first time where everybody is worried about their body temperature. Everybody is worried about what is their heart rate and everybody wants to know their oxygen levels. And unprecedented amount of data is being uploaded and shared globally between doctors, patients, organizations, pharma companies, vaccine developers, governments. Everybody wants to know what is happening. And this is leading to massive amount of digitization, which would have normally taken years and possibly decades to happen. So we always had this challenge around how healthcare data is going to get digitized. Today, it is getting digitized in a very, very different scale and all driven by consumers themselves. And that is also creating another very interesting paradigm. And just last month, if you, if you all recollect, we launched uh, the first wearable uh, called Goki Vital 3, which has the capability to detect body temperature, blood pressure, heart rate, so many parameters and which uh, which along with the help of AI and algorithms can become an early detection of COVID and potentially many other conditions. And the good news here is, guys and girls, that we are going to in the next few years, maybe even shorter than that, given COVID, between your wrist and uh, your phone, you will be able to get all major vital data in a snapshot and personal health data is becoming and will become ubiquitous. So I think that changes the game. Just give an example. Normally, a person used to record their blood pressure or measure your blood pressure once a year at best. Today, people on our platform are measuring their blood pressure five times a day. Uh, our device can take 3,600 heart rate readings and the same amount of body temperature readings a day. So roughly just between heart rate, body temperature, we are tracking 20 to 25,000 parameters for a person in one day itself. And this data 
combined with the power of AI is going to disrupt a lot of industries. And if you are a startup, you should seriously look at uh, some of the disruptions which it can cause. And I would say that this is going to lead to a crazy new era of collaborative efforts for global health, which has never seen before, because we are now talking about consumers digitizing qualitative information, quantitative information, whether it is wearables, whether it is lifestyle data, whether it is medical data, prescriptions, whether it is diet, fitness, even doctor notes, all of that is getting together collated. And this is going to lead to disruptions in medical research, disruption in privacy, disruption in doctors, uh, disruption in data science. And the way people are going to look at this is going to be very, very new. And I think all of this is going to play a role into creating what I call uh, personalized medicine. I think the future of health is no longer going to be about giving you one uh, pill uh, or something which has been tested on 500 people, but more around personalized medicine. And the best thing is that if you look at what is personalized medicine, personalized medicine is, is going back to how can you change your lifestyle and build immunity. So personalized medicine is not going to be a new pill, but it's going to be advice on how can you improve your nutrition? How can you improve your cognition? How can you improve your fitness? And if you look at this framework, which we actually put together last year, and uh, we are actually working a lot on it. And if you look at how future healthcare platforms are going to evolve, uh, the base of uh, this whole immunity development uh, uh, framework is sleep. So if you have impaired sleep, that causes the biggest challenge when it comes to any kind of uh, health issues, followed by nutrition, fitness, cognition, and eventually happiness. I think if you look at this framework, that really is what works around this whole system. And uh, coming back to, uh, to what is really happening with all this, right? and I'll give you uh, a few data points that I think health, which was currently something which people neglected. And the whole idea was that uh, we are going to look at it uh, once we get sick. And hence, we had what I call the sick care model. I to the true health care model or preventative model where you can take control of your health as a consumer and get empowered by it. And let me, for example, show you how a future healthcare system looks like. And I want to show you uh, my own health data, for example, that we've been tracking. I've been tracking pretty much all my major insights, my major health, health data. And now with the help of algorithms, data, this has been able to extrapolate. So let me just see if I can share that screen with you uh, to give you a sense of this. Let me open my data over here. So if you see uh, the way things work, so this is going to show you a snapshot of my data. And you would see that here is my baseline temperature and it has been pretty, pretty good. And I can even look at my last 24 hours temperature variance and you can see it's been pretty consistent. Similarly, you can see my heart rate variance, but this has been times during my workout or whatever else I was doing. But I think today as a consumer, I have the power to look at all this information that coupled by my blood pressure or my sleep related information or my activity level information and real time information goes all into a central dashboard. So this is, for example, this is a, a test dashboard of some of the people just for a demo so that you can get so I can track them. Alerts can be generated. These things can be seen. And suddenly you can either do this kind of self-monitoring for your own self-monitoring for an organization. As you know, we are already deploying this with police forces, companies, uh, a lot of people who have thousands of people on the road or on the street. How do you measure them? How do you look at their health care? 
I think so that model changes. Similarly, when it comes to hospitals uh, today, if they have COVID patients who are uh, asymptomatic or symptomatic, but not having any challenges, the nurse or the healthcare workers don't need to go and take their temperature and vitals. People can pretty much on their wrist monitor a lot of these things. So whatever is being done right now for COVID in the short to medium term, I believe is going to have uh, long term effects on the overall system. So COVID will go away. I mean, we all know that it's not something which is going to be there. Uh, but what is going to be more important is other conditions. We know diabetes, cholesterol, hypertension, cancer. These are all bigger issues. And today, if you look at the mortality rates, people who are actually dying are people who had some of the other challenges or comorbidities, as we say. So I think this is a good wake up call for people to invest in their own health, invest in their immunity and as consumers adopt to healthier products, you know, avoid junk food, for example, and at the same time, feed your brain uh, with healthy uh, content. Uh, we are all today, you know, while people are, you know, you could have been on Instagram or TikTok or anywhere else, people who have chosen to spend their time enriching their brain with more information or learning, that is a good way to spend your time rather than feeding your brain junk information. So just the way you can feed your body junk, you could feed your mind also junk information. So I think it's a good time to avoid that. And finally, uh, it's also about leveling up your game. This is a time where people need to invest in themselves. And just the way we are looking to upgrade or buy the next version of your laptop or phone or a car or anything, uh, the big question to ask is that how can you upgrade yourself? And if you had to build a, a new version of yourself, what are the new skills or what are the new uh, tools you want to get enriched with. So I think that's really the framework. And we as consumers uh, are going to be defining a lot. We already saw Sonam Wangchup saying that as our wallet power comes in, we are going to support companies. We are going to support indigenous companies, indigenous technologies. And hopefully I would go to the extent of saying that we also want to support startups. So if you are a startup looking at uh, uh, disruptive ideas, you can proudly project it as a startup product. And today, very frankly, I personally like to support if there is a product of a startup versus a well-established company, I would always want to give a startup another chance. So I think uh, this event is really great and it is celebrating entrepreneurship. And I thank all the organizers here. And I think we can jump into a Q&A uh, uh, and a moderated discussion. And I'm happy to take any of your questions here. Uh, thank you. Uh, I can't hear you, Pradeshin. Sorry, your voice. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can. Yeah. Yes. Thank you so much, Vishal. Mm -hmm. I'm just waiting for my editor in chief to join us because uh, she would want to have a couple of quite uh, a little talk with you. But before that, before uh, she joins us, I'll ask you a few questions that we have. One is uh, by us. Uh, one second. Uh, where is, okay. One is by uh, Harshit Garg. The question is in the disruptive market with many health uh, trackers available at a competitive price, how this product or model, model targets a huge consumer market? So uh, like I was telling uh, before, right? So we are not in the business of hardware. Uh, hmm. We are in the business of how do we make you healthy? How does the data which our hardware or any other hardware uh, is generating. How does that data help you to become healthier? How can we give you actionable insights to improve your health? So like I said, data is going to become ubiquitous, whether it is GoKey or Apple Watch or any device or any phone. Eventually, every person will have something to track. But the question is, once you are generating 25,000 data points a day, how are people going to analyze and tell you what to do with that data is going to be what you're going to pay for. So I think the business is not about data. It's about what do you do with the data? How do you benefit from the data? 
Uh, an interesting example is we worked with now not one but six insurance companies, and we have created products which are now part of the regulatory sandbox, which says that based on your health data, we can reduce your insurance premium and make it cheaper. So mm-hmm. the question is not about saying which wearable data you have, but the question is that can a platform actually analyze this and create an underwriting score? so that insurance company will say yes i am willing to give you a discount so goki is trying to build an overall ecosystem to enable you to do that and not just a piece of hardware hardware is more an enabler for us all right cool i hope that answers your question another question we have is from akil ahuja no uh, n- not akil uh, another question we have is There are a lot of questions actually. I'm just figuring out which one to ask you. Okay, uh, one we have is from Neha. What is your opinion on the longevity or the future of these habit? Uh, you starting like tracking healthcare information. Where do you see these technologies disruption in a post pandemic world where social distancing norms may eventually fade? So like. like i said right the ultimate uh, the ultimate medicine for all problems is your own immunity your own body and longevity is directly a link of how you can improve that already we know that countries like japan italy had a lifespan of 85 plus india still the average lifespan is only 66 which is why uh there is a huge scope of people actually improving their longevity by making lifestyle changes i think uh this pandemic is also a wake up call that we cannot rely on uh, building bad habits which lead to diabetes cholesterol hypertension because these are conditions which impact immunity and medicines can only help you subside the symptoms they are not solving the problem so if you are diabetic type 2 diabetic you need to reduce your carbohydrate intake you need to increase your exercise and reduce stress by having a medicine you may artificially reduce your levels but that does not change the actual condition so i would say that longevity is going to be a function of how you nourish your body and how you work towards uh, improving Uh, your overall immunity all right now we have our editor in chief of india and apac joining us as well that's ritu maria so i'll leave the stage to vishal and ritu yeah thank you so much uh, priya and hi vishal that was a wonderful presentation as i was hearing you uh, backstage um you know uh, as priya was saying we've got questions coming in so before i start asking you a few questions i'm going to sort of uh, look at the questions which are being asked by the audience um so one of the questions coming from kajal is uh, what is going to be the impact on physical health as all the time one is glued to uh, pcs or mobiles well, what what do you feel uh, is likely outcome of that so clearly physical well being is going to be a big challenge because you have limited mobility in your homes but i would say more than physical well being mental well being is what is currently the bigger challenge in my opinion because uh, we are all social animals we are not used to isolation we are not used to being confined in our rooms and uh, at one end you are playing this dual role of suddenly you are in office suddenly you are washing vessels suddenly <laughs> you are uh, making food so what has happened is that normally as humans we used to transition we used to travel from home to office then you were in an office more then you went to a party or you went to a conference you are a different person when you are in a conference today we are all sitting in the same place and i am supposed to act like i am a different person every time and this is taking a mental toll on people and clearly we have already seen that people have lack of sleep i think the right now sleep is impacted for pretty much everybody i don't know of too many people who can say they are having a very good night sleep uh, because of so many uh, anxieties around so many things so i would say more than physical well being mental well being is a challenge and uh, my number one recommendation to all of you is to do at least 10 minutes of mindfulness it could be meditation listening to uh, something called binaural music which can put you in a meditative state um 
so focus on mental health sure and i think going forward it's only going to be a bigger need as um, you know and now with work from home you're basically always on there there is no logging out i mean irrespective of uh, of what time or what place you're sitting in you're always sort of on it so there's another important question which is actually come for your business model uh, which states something like uh, do you intend to get into genome genomics uh, going forward is this an area of interest for you so genomics is interesting and we don't intend to get into genomics but we do take genomic information into our platform to make decisions especially for a lot of conditions uh, genomic data can give change your risk levels uh, there are several conditions which make you predisposed to higher risks uh, especially when it comes to type 2 diabetes whether it comes to heart disease uh, whether it comes to even what kind of athletic body do you have that some people have muscles which are good for endurance and some people have genes which are better for speed so uh, genetics can play a big role but let me once again tell you genetics and all this data is just the overall framework but the real what you can change on a day to day basis is your lifestyle so by just knowing your genetic information you will just know that hey you have 5% more chances of getting cancer but that does not mean that you have to not do exercise or not do enough sleep i think finally the input needs to get better absolutely well somebody is also asked about data i mean uh, would you really say that i mean and this is something not just true for consumer tech but really all across we have so much data that is being uh, collaborated and cohorted together that it's hard you know for somebody who doesn't understand what data to really look at what is the data you need to really look at to get results out so i mean what would be your suggestion so like i said too much j- data becomes junk so mm. like i said we are generating 25000 data points from just one device for one person a day so just for one person we have millions of data points and on its own they mean nothing but that same data going through algorithms going through analytics and then combining that data with an expert like a coach can guide you the same way right think about the stock market there is the stock price of every stock changes every second every minute but how do you decide which companies to invest in is by studying researching looking at their balance sheets doing at analyst reports and then deciding whether you want to invest in a stock or you not want to invest in a stock similarly people read entrepreneur magazines and attend your events to figure out what businesses are good what startups to invest in because sure. you need to go to experts like you right on your own it will be very difficult similarly when it comes to health uh you will require intermediaries who are going to help you with your data currently there is going to be a big industry created between the consumer and the healthcare system which is the doctor and hospital and the goal of this industry is how do you not go there how can we avoid you from getting sick so i think that is going to be the new mantra of prevention because we have realized that today so the idea was not to buy you know people were having this whole debate on buying ventilators but the it's a very bad idea to buy so many ventilators because people who go on ventilators have a very low survival rate it Correct. is better to have more investment in testing more investment in protection home quarantining taki wahan tak log na pahunche so same concept applies uh and i think uh, even for businesses right i keep telling that this is a good time to build immunity for your business uh the same way we are talking about immunity for your organizations it's about immunity for your business and your health because uh companies which are going to have poor cash flow or you know too much employee turnover or very high credit cycles all these are going to impact your business's health because Correct. you are not able to deal with these situations and while you can get funding which is blood transfusion there is only that much blood transfusion which can be given to somebody externally your body needs to generate its own blood flow or your own cash flow so i think it's the question about how soon can you generate cash flow versus you always being dependent on external funding now i mean since you mentioned business opportunities within consumer tech honestly if there were to be new startups to be born i mean both as an investor or probably as somebody uh, as a mentor what would be the consumer tech uh, uh, startups that would be interesting for you to see in the times to come 
so i would say that you know i i tend to always go with first hand experiences right so i think the reason i created goki was going through my own journey on health and fitness and seeing how uh, people around me were dealing and struggling with the healthcare system themselves similarly i think right now in the times of covid there are so many new opportunities which we have seen you know again it's very very uh, challenging that even now dominos has been able to deliver its pizza still in 30 minutes but uh, we are still struggling to get ambulances and doctors and hospital beds so i think that's how amazing a business somebody like dominos has been able to create but at the same time we are struggling with the delivery the last mile delivery of healthcare services i think uh, so clearly there is a huge opportunity and if you are looking at consumer businesses think about the last mile delivery of a lot of healthcare services just like how food delivery has got sorted out or uh, amazon and flipkart have sorted out e-commerce deliveries we are seeing a huge problem in health delivery similarly there are a lot of challenges uh, around infrastructure and uh, you know we are struggling around uh, you know hospitals and so on and now everybody in, in our own society they have got oxygen cylinders and stuff and kept in the housing societies itself because they are saying that we are preparing to convert uh, the society itself into a center for home quarantine so yeah. that's how people are thinking innovatively right so i think it's a question on how people can think of innovative models around this and if you have experienced a pain point uh see how you can solve that problem for yourself for your neighborhood for your society and then scale it up at a bigger level so so i think for example before we build this personal health i have been tracking my health data for years i can show you my every month i used to take a blood test every month eventually my wife stopped it saying no 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 don't take so much blood so i do a blood test every 3 months but i literally a lot of people again don't do so many blood tests but i have my blood work for the last 4 years every month and i can tell you what parameters need to work on on what parameters i have been able to change so i think people need to look at data that closely uh i mean while you were mentioning about uh, this thing so what you really saying is hyper local of uh, health tech really i mean you know if uh, when you say quarantining in your own societies and making you know your own um, but I mean, where, where is the, i mean is this really a business opportunity for a long time so so let me give you an example of business opportunities which i could not imagine so recently my kids in the lockdown attended a world's biggest music concert mm. and this concert of scott travis was held inside the game called fortnite 6 million people attended a concert virtual concert inside a game to pehle game hi tha jo logo ko samajh nahi aa raha hai six me and they i think both the kids paid some 5 or 10 dollars to attend this concert live inside a game mm. so while we are all worrying about work from home and we are trying to organize these sessions uh, the kids and the generation has evolved to attending virtual sessions inside virtual games correct so i think if you really want to see where the future is the future is already happening in front of our eyes look at how massively people are are adopting to platforms like tiktok and tiktok has penetrated uh cities and strata of the society who could never come on instagram or facebook so i would say that we are underestimating the power of consumers and the power of what their imagination can take them to we are limited by our own thought of this world but yeah. uh, uh, like i said maybe the future is going to be that we are all going to have the next entrepreneur event inside a virtual world where we are all going to be avatars walking with the vr goggles and not in this 2d video yeah exactly that's what my vr goggles are like. from there here <laughs> i'm ready with my vr goggles by the way <laughs> yeah i've been i've been playing a lot with my uh this is my oculus uh, rift which uh, was launched by facebook and believe me i mean uh, you know some of the right now uh i watch a lot of netflix movies in it because it makes it makes it feel like you are inside a movie theater mm. so since a lot of movies are directly releasing to netflix or amazon prime 
uh, I think this is going to be the new tool which maybe movie goers will sell and tell you to watch it in virtual reality like you are in a theater. So there's essentially you're talking about community within a community within a community and that's how it's going to probably go forward. Absolutely. A lot of these ideas are already there in science fiction. So I don't know if how many of you have seen Black Mirror this show on Netflix. Uh you know in fact Black Mirror sounds like it was a little old because I think what we are seeing in reality is even crazier than what happened in black mirror and recently there was another series on amazon prime if i am not mistaken uh, i think it's called upload uh, if i am not mistaken i don't know uh, i think it is upload yeah uh, so i would urge you all since you all have some time you should watch upload and it talks about how people who are dead when you die you can upload your entire uh, let's say your consciousness your memories on to a virtual world and an ai takes that over and you are basically surviving as a virtual character in this virtual world and other people can come and meet you in this virtual world and That's again right. i think this is going to happen again you know the funny thing is when i saw that show i was like this is very much going to happen because uh, if indeed they can digitize my memories and my uh, and how i think as a framework of course the ai may have some glitches which what happens in this show too uh, there is definitely going to be a world like this so i would say that you know the crazier you can think of ideas they all do exist and uh, i would recommend people watching upload and see this and there's also this movie and this uh, book called ready player one which also talks about a similar future Yeah I mean I was talking to an entrepreneur yesterday and I think it's very similar to being on Roblox of everything <laughs> so Roblox is actually that kids games you know I have Roblox pretty much in everything as a community absolutely yeah uh so so Vishal I know we've taken a lot of your time I'll take this one final question from a gentleman uh, Sachin who's asked is that um, can you comment on the opportunities that have arisen because of your collaboration between Goki and Eat Fit or any other fitness startups so uh again you know our focus is the consumer and what today takes the consumer away from health and fitness uh, and uh, this is very interesting a lot of people ask me is that who is your number one competition and our number one competition is not any of the other fitness or health apps our number one competition is laziness and who is making people lazy by the way uh, it's ott platforms most people today are spending time on netflix amazon prime most people are eating junk food so our bigger goal is to work on overall well being of the country so one of our big partnership is by the way fit india so we are the partners with fit india and during this lockdown we actually organized online workouts for all the cbse schools of india 16000 schools every day our coaches were organizing workouts for kids so that's sure. the thing we are trying to operate in because i think in india as a country and our gdp we already saw we used to say health can have a huge impact on gdp so the future will now be determined by how healthy your population is and i would say that modi ji was really right in putting fit india at least because that is the future framework which needs to be adopted by this entire country एक पैंडमिक तो हमको बच गया बट वी नो मोर सच पैंडमिक्स मे कम इन द फ्यूचर एंड दैट वी कैन नॉट बी अगेन रिलाइंग ऑन इम्पेड इम्यूनिटी इम्यूनिटी से कुछ वी हैव टू मेक श्योर वी मेक आवर सेल्फ स्ट्रॉगर राधर देन डिपेंडिंग ऑन मेडिसिन एंड अदर थिंग्स Sure. So with that, I'll have to conclude, Vishal. Thank you so much thank for you. talking, and I think some great ideas in uh, consumer tech. Of course, is something, and you know, it's how far you can visualize, and anything could be consumer tech possibly. The strength is in building communities and being able to offer your community more and more. Thank you very much, Vishal. Very interesting you. having you in a very interesting talk, indeed. Thank you.